we get to travel all over the southeast and southwest and go to some really neat places in taping Fox Sports Outdoors. And we're coming to you this week from just such a place. Great history, beautiful architecture, and great fishing. It all comes your way in the next half hour. Fox Sports Outdoors is on the air right now. You're watching the only program with weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southeast region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's show. I'm coming to you right now from the historic and beautiful downtown area of Savannah, Georgia. This place is unbelievable. It's one of the few cities that General Sherman did not burn on his historic Civil War march across the Southeast. And so most of the buildings are still standing here from pre-Civil War days. Those are the big cotton exchange buildings where they bartered all of the cotton all over the world from right here in this port in Savannah. There's lots of important American history in this city. However, if you know me very well, you know that I came here, yes for the history, yes for the beauty, yes for the architecture, but for the fishing. This is the Savannah River. It runs right through downtown Savannah and empties into the Atlantic Ocean. And where it does, there's some great fishing, including a fish that can be very elusive, very hard to find, and very difficult to catch, the triple tail. But I know a guy that's locked on them right now, Captain Josiah Riffle is gonna jump in our Blazer Bay 2420 GTS, head out on the Atlantic Ocean and put us on some triple tail and maybe a redfish or two. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Don't get to catch many triple tails, so I'm really excited about this week's show. And while we're out doing that, we're taking you around your local region for your fishing reports from our expert team of insider reporters from lakes, rivers, and bays where you live, both fresh and salt water. So right now, we're going to go get the Blazer Bay 2420 GTS launched into the ocean. Get started fishing. Next time you see me, I'll be out there with Captain Riffle. Right now, let's get it all started back at the FSN Studios with your weekend planner. This weekend is looking great for fishing action with the salooner tables indicating excellent conditions for both days. Peak game fish activity is expected to start at 11.44 a.m. on Saturday and again on Sunday at 12.07 a.m. and 12.29 p.m. Look for the sun to rise at 7.15 and set at 7.24. And we'll have a moon that is 94% visible. Stay with us for freshwater and coastal fishing information from around the region. Plus, I'll return with Bassmaster Elite Angler Greg Hackney to answer this week's Ask the Pro question. We're coming right back. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Motor Guide's new wireless and easy to use XI3. XI batteries powering the world forward. Waypoint Marine, the Gulf Coast's leading saltwater boating specialist. And Strike King, designed by the pros, fished by you. See what we got. Triple tail. He has got a hard pulling triple tail. back. I do. I like it to kind of the current to go right to the wreck or the, the stru structure and let the bait go right underneath it. Uh, and I kind of will pull it back and you kind of just let it keep doing it. Fish, fish. Got one on? Got one on. Man, that didn't take long. Hey everybody, welcome back. We uh, have made it out here just outside Savannah, Georgia. We're on the boat and uh, Josiah Riffle's with us and the first thing that happened was his very first cast. If you can believe that, he's got a fish on. See what we got. Triple tail. He has got a hard pulling triple tail right off the bat here. He's gonna make me get the net. First thing, First buddy. Thing. Boy, look how hard those things fight. Holy cow. Got it. <laughs> look what we've done the very first thing, buddy. All right. <laughs> you wanna go ahead and get the hook out before we do anything? And let's show them what a good triple tail looks like. What a beautiful fish. And uh, so talk to me a little bit about the, the size of these fish and what they're doing here. Right, so triple tail is a slow growing fish. And the reason they call it triple tail is their pectoral fin and dorsal fin are so far back, it's almost like they have three tails. So meaning they, you know, strong fight. You hook one of these and you gotta put the drag to the, 
to the pen on, to get them away. Now these fish, um, they're migrating in off the ocean, right? Typically, yep. They come from Florida every year and typically around May to June, they start moving in on structure. So we're fishing this old range marker right here and they just pretty much, not only for the shade, but for the bait, they sit there and ambush. We're off to a great start, hang in there. That fish goes in the live well and uh, let's see if we can get up here and catch another one. Hey guys, this week's Tennessee, Mississippi and Alabama fishing report is brought to you by Orion Coolers. They have coolers ranging from 25 to 85 quart sizes to fit all of your needs. Uh, there's a lot going on this time of year and it is all centered around weather. Um, just like in the early part of the year, this part of the year, we're, we're looking for, for temperature changes and that really dictates where the fish are. In Mississippi right now, I'm going to go crappie fishing. I'm, I'm going to go to, to Enid, Sardis, and Washington. There's not as many of them, but they're big, and they're, once you find one, they're all kind of grouped up. Soft plastic spider rigging seem to be the key. In Alabama, it's the Coosa River for spotted bass. Uh, take advantage of that moving water, a um, little bit smaller water, and a lot of times it's a little bit cooler uh, daytime temperatures. In Tennessee, uh, the Tennessee River is notoriously tough this time of year, so I'm going to go to uh, Real Foot Lake and I'm going to go catfishing and bluegill fishing. Uh, the bass fishing is not bad either and you can catch them around all those cypress trees and lily pads with a frog type bait, buzz bait, whatever. I'm also going to go to Percy Priest. The evening bite's been really good for stripers and bass on the lower end of the lake and the crappie bite is pretty good from mid lake to lower end of the lake as well. So that time of year I'm just going to try to stay cool uh, and enjoy myself on the water. We'd love to see you here right now. God bless. At the heart of Kentucky Lake is a special place known as Paris, Tennessee. It's a place where fishing, hunting, dining, shopping, and family fun are all served with a side of Southern hospitality. We hope you'll join us soon and experience this world by the water. You got one, big one? All right, we got to go. You got it clear yet? Oh yeah, that's a big one. There we go. I'll go get the net. Get he's that. wanting. He's wanting to go back to it. Yeah, he is. You got him clear. You got him. You got him clear. Now he's going away from it. Look at this beautiful fish coming at us right here. That rod's right below your feet. Watch out. Come up here, buddy. Big one. Look at that. Big one, man. That's full grown. That's a full grown fish right there. We're going to walk around here where we've got more room. Look at this big dude. That's what I'm talking about. Great big triple tail right here. And you did a great job of negotiating that fish around all that dust. And got my line frayed up from where you got in the structure right there. Floor carbon. There we go. Look at that. Look at that fish. What a good one right there. That's a good 22. 22 inches. Wow, what will a fish like that weigh probably? Feels like he's a good eight pounds. You're using this tide current to your advantage on these right. fish. So explain to us what you're doing. In fact, I want to show you a quick shot here of our Lawrence HDS carbon 12 inch display unit here. And we've got the tide chart pulled up. Explain to us what we're looking at and what this tide's doing. So the first of this outgoing tide when the current's just barely moving is allowing our corks to hit the structure and letting our bait swing underneath because they're underneath the structure waiting to ambush. All right, buddy, back to the live well, one more gun. Yes, sir. Woo! What a pull, dude. Look at him jump. Golly. <laughs> that is so cool. You got one? There he is. You got him. Oh, he's jumping. Look at that. That dude is jumping. What a pull, dude. Look at him jump. Golly. <laughs> that is so cool. This way, buddy. All right, we got him. <laughs> oh, man. What a oh, wild <laughs> fish, dude. Got that is airborne so on that. cool. That fish jumped like four times. Well, we're still here right out of Savannah, Georgia, and most people know Savannah, Georgia for its great history and its great architecture. It's a great tourist destination. Uh, people everywhere down there taking walking tours and, 
and uh, bus tours and stuff, and they just don't realize that you can come make a fishing trip here. Man, what a great, that one's not quite as big as the first one you caught. Not quite. Still, still the Georgia limit, but not quite as big. Yep. So what we're doing is we're fishing structure, just uh, kind of almost on the border between South Carolina and Georgia. Explain to us what this is we're throwing at and why these fish are here. Right, so this is an old range marker, and over time, you know, it, this pretty much got tore down. They don't use it no more, but the structure of it holds these fish. They love to be in the shade of it and ambush behind the poles. Nope. So they'll literally sit there five foot of water and wait for bait to swim by. Hey folks, it's time for your Carolinas report. This week brought to you by the Crazy Sister Marina, located on the Marsh Walk and Rolls Inlet. We're the leader in water sports and we have been for years. Anything you want to do on the water, we can take care of it right here for you. Come down and enjoy a great fall fishing trip. Make sure you book it now. Fall fishing is incredible here. Visit crazysister.com for more information. Hurricane Florence was terrible to North and South Carolina. Along the coast here, along the Grand Strand where my home is, we were spared most of the damage. North of us in North Carolina, it was absolutely terrible. Inland from us where these rivers are flooding and starting to crest as of airtime tonight, most of these rivers will be cresting and they're gonna be cresting at feet above what Hurricane Matthews was two years ago. It's incredible and there's been a lot of devastation. These people need our help. You know, Red Cross is a great group to donate to. Helping Hands or Samaritan's Purse are great groups that you can donate to and make a difference and help these people out. We're gonna be trying to feed, feed these guys over the next couple weeks. The guys that are displaced from their homes, making sure they're taken care of. It's what we do as fishermen, as American citizens. We just help out. Keep these people in your thoughts and prayers as they deal with the weeks, months, and years ahead, regaining, rebuilding all their dreams that they've lost. I want to talk about some fishing, but it's really tough this week. But I'll tell you, if you get out after the storm in your area, we're seeing some great reports already of guys that are getting out and doing some fishing. If you've got the opportunity, get out and go fishing and send us your report. This has been your Carolina's Report, brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina. Remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. There you got a little one. Bob her down, bob her down, bob her down. I got a good one. Look at this. Oh, you got a good one. Let me get this one out of the way. Yeah. He's over here to the left. All right. I have a triple tail. And he, and he went away from the structure. First thing. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't you go into that boat. Don't you go into that boat. Look at that. Whoa. Whoa. That's what I was afraid of. What a powerful fish. Trying to get right back in the Straight red. down. Straight down. Straight down. Look at that dude. Got him, all right. Man, Josiah, look at that. There's a big old triple tail. All right, we are still out triple tail fishing and I have caught myself a good one right next to the structure. Fishing with uh, Josiah Riffle. Go that way with him. Look at that. There's me a good triple tail. Let's talk about size of these fish. This is good, good quality size triple tail, but you said you believe some of the biggest triple tail in Georgia live right, right here, here near Savannah, right in this area. Why do you say that? Right near Savannah River, just because of the, the depth of the water, the current, the bait that pushes in here. So it's just got a good habitat with these range markers and cans, the good place for them to live and ambush bait. We are keeping triple tail today. They make some great eating. So into the live well, that dude goes. <laughs> that is a lot of fun right there. If you've never caught a triple tail, it's kind of one of those elusive bucket list fish that you've got to catch. They're up and down the Gulf Coast, the Atlantic Coast. You've just got to get in the right spot at the right time. With the right fishing guide, you can catch one too. You've got to do this at some point in your life. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Champions aren't born, they're made. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Plan your fishing vacation and catch the details at orangebeach.com slash fishing. And Lorenz and the new Hook 2, the world's easiest fish finder. Well, we've made a move. You can see in the background right there, all that green marsh grass. We are red fishing now. Got it? Yep. 
that one hit way down the bank. Well, we've made a move. You can see in the background right there, all that green marsh grass. We are red fishing now. Captain Josiah's got us up uh, in some shallow water and we're fishing along the edge of a grass line on a fallen tide, the fish are coming out of the grass. We've actually been catching some small reds, but it looks like we've got a little better one going right now. Yeah. Nose are right in. No, <laughs> she shied away. Yeah, we got it. All right. Got it hooked right in the corner of the jaw. There you go. Beautiful redfish, one spot on the tail. So, uh, that's 24 inch. No. As far as the redfish go, is that pretty much a year-round fishery here? Pretty much year-round. Typically, uh, wintertime, they school up a lot more together. Uh, summertime, they kind of just spread out. So if you want to target redfish here, what are you looking for? So the main thing is you're looking for the bait coming out. These redfish are in the grass feeding on a lot of uh, crabs and a lot of shrimp. So if you see shrimp, crabs busting all up in the water, that's where your redfish are at. And so typically, you know, just over time working the bank with trolling motor up and down, you find these little pockets that hold these fish, which in theory hold the bait, and that's why they're there. This portion of the show is brought to you by the state of Mississippi, where fishing fun is year-round, and where the Mississippi Gulf Coast offers some of the best inshore angling and offshore adventures anywhere in the world. So start your fishing adventure in the true south, Mississippi. Well, we've got some fall weather periodically going on along the Gulf Coast. But for uh, regions that are uh, either after a tropical storm or a hurricane, the fishing has been very good. Uh, Captain uh, Tim Cutting in uh, St. Simons Island, Georgia, has been uh, really doing well on tarpon and triple tail, both. Tarpon are inshore, he's catching those fish in 48 feet of water. These are good fish, they're 30 to 50 to sometimes 100 pounds. They're around bait pods. Tim is being very meticulous in finding those bait pods in 48 feet of water when he does. To hook up a live bait of similar size to the fluorocarbon leader and you don't use too heavy of a hook because you want that bait of the same size that they're feeding on to act very natural. In Mississippi it's uh, redfish, lots of reds all over the lower coastal area there and are also catching black drum for those anglers that are using crab uh, baits. Uh, crabs take both uh, black drum and redfish. Falling tides are best. Uh, in Alabama, Captain Charlie Gray says uh, that Dolphin Island area has been good for trout uh, during moving tides in the Mobile Bay area. The lower bay is very good for redfish. And there's Kobe, the 30 pounds offshore around the anchored ship, ships that are waiting to go into uh, uh, the city of Mobile. And he's catching those fish on big jigs with curly tails attached. Well, that's it for the coast. Get out in the water and take a youngster with you when you go. You can always watch our latest episode on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Catch up on past episodes by clicking the archive button and learn about fishing techniques and new gear at our how-to page. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter for new fishing videos every day. Simply search for Fox Sports Outdoors and click the like button on Facebook and follow button on Twitter. And watch a new episode every week on any device by downloading the free Waypoint TV app on your phone tablet, computer, or smart TV. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Lou's. Feel the difference. Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland. We know bass and crappie from heads to tails. And by Glacier Glove. Stay outdoors longer with our gloves, hats, and shades. Welcome back everyone. It's time for the Ask the Pro segment where viewers get expert advice from professional insiders. This week's question comes from Jeff who asks, do you have to be near light to catch bass at night or can you catch them in pitch dark conditions? For the answer, we checked with Bassmaster Elite Angler Greg Hackney. You don't have to have lights, you know, to catch bass at night. Uh, you know, there are some lakes in the country that have lots of docks, and a lot of the dock owners will put out lights, and those lights do have a tendency to attract bugs in the summertime, then small bait fish to those lights, and then, of course, the, you know, the predator fish follow. You can catch, you know, giant stripers around lights and bass, but there are tons of bass caught all over the country on, on natural lakes where there are no boat docks, no anything, and no light and you can catch a bass in the middle of a dark night with no moon. Um, fish just have that ability to change their eyesight during low light conditions and they still feed at night. And uh, more times in the summer months are my favorite times. The only problem with where I live at is you have to carry extra blood because the amount of mosquitoes that are out after dark. 
Thank you, Greg. If you have something to ask one of the pros, visit our website and follow the Ask the Pro link to submit your question. Now let's take a look at this week's Big Catch winner. Hey, everybody, back at the marina, and it's time right now for this week's winner in the Big Catch of the Week contest. He's Danny G of Apex, North Carolina, showing a 37-inch redfish he caught at the Noose River, North Carolina. If you'd like to be our next winner, just go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com, click on the Big Catch of the Week box on the right side of the homepage, and follow the instructions to send us your big fish photo. Next up, let's talk about some of the gear we used to catch these triple tail and redfish. It was an adjustable bobber rig. We've got a little bobber stop up here on our 50 pound test braided line. Then we've got the sliding bobber. That way we can adjust our depth as the tide rises and falls. We've got a weight under that, a couple of feet of 40 pound test fluorocarbon leader, and then a kale hook. And I had all this rigged up on the loose TP1 Speed Stick Inshore Series Rods. It's a seven foot medium action rod with the wind grip handles. And this is my first chance to use the loose Blair Wiggins Series Spinning Reel. It's a 4,000 size reel. It'll hold 265 yards of eight pound test line. Again, we had it rigged up with 50 pound braided line. And I can't say enough about my brand new Blazer Bay 2420 GTS Bay Boat. It is the perfect boat for this style of fishing. It will go offshore, near shore, and inshore. A couple of things specifically I love about it in addition to the great ride is the sport top that goes back behind the console. That way it doesn't get in the way of your back cast, but it still gives you plenty of shade on those really hot, calm days. And then the brand new addition that I'm running has the built-in rod storage. You can lock your rods inside the storage boxes for the ride across or if you're traveling from place to place like I do, it'll hold up to six rods in either side rod locker. Some people just won't work and they sit around waiting for the government to take care of them. Some people work too hard and too long making themselves and everyone around them miserable. A healthy life contains a balance between those two extremes. Even God himself rested from his labors on the seventh day, and that's why he ordained the Sabbath for his people to rest. So if you're one of those people who just can't stop working, this is your official permission to give it a rest. Stop, relax, do something fun. Not only will you be healthier, but you'll make all those people you love around you happier as well. I think it would be a lot of fun if you booked your very own fishing trip right here out of Savannah, Georgia. Brian, Josiah do a great job and they can put you on a multitude different species of fish. All their information is on the screen. Book your own trip and you can have a great time just like we did right here at Savannah, Georgia. Until next week, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.